Hi everyone, my name is Mimi Wu and I'm a nutritionist with the Nutrition Education Training and Technical Assistance Division at USDA's Food and Nutrition Service and Child Nutrition Program. Thank you so much for joining us for today's webinar on identifying whole grain rich foods for the CACFP using ingredient list. This webinar is part of Team Nutrition's monthly CACFP Have Time on Thursday's webinar series. These webinars are held on the third Thursday of every month in both English and in Spanish. The English webinar is held from 2 to 2.30 Eastern Time, and the Spanish webinar is held from 3 to 3.30 Eastern Time. These webinars will be recorded and made available at a later date on the Teen Nutrition website. We will have time at the end of this webinar to take questions. You can use the chat box at any time during the webinar to enter your questions, and we will try to answer as many as we can at the end of this webinar. If you cannot hear us through your computer speakers, you probably can't hear me saying this, but you can call in by phone number two. Please dial 866-740-1260. When prompted, enter the access code 605 -4013. This number will be shown at the bottom of each of the slides throughout this presentation. So if you lose audio over your computer at any point, you can call this number and you should still be able to hear using your telephone. Okay, so before we get started, we want to know who you are. Please go ahead and select one of the following listed on the slide here. Uh, let us know if you work for a child care center, family child care home, at-risk after-school care center, adult day care center, sponsor, emergency shelter, school food authority, state agency, USDA regional office, or other. Let me see. Oh my goodness. There's a great variety of you guys, and wherever you're from and whoever you are, we're just so happy to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us. We're also interested in knowing how long you have been working with the CACFP. This includes, those, this includes those of you who are caring for infants and children during the day, those of you who may be responsible for planning menus and preparing meals, as well as those of you who may have administrative functions such as tallying creditable meal counts and submitting claims. So go ahead and select one of the following listed on the slide here. Have you been working for CACFP zero to two years? two to five years, five to eight years, eight to 10 years, or 10 plus years. Great, wow, well it's wonderful to see we have some really seasoned CACFP operators, as well as some people who are newer to the program. So let's go ahead and get started. As you guys know, today's topic is identifying whole grain rich foods for the CACFP using ingredient lists. We realize this information may be a lot to cover in half an hour, so today's webinar will kind of cover more of the basics of how you can identify whole grain rich foods for the CACFP. After you all have had a chance to practice what you learned today over the next few months, we will revisit this topic as part of our CACFP halftime webinar in January, on January 17th. Also, Team Nutrition will be releasing a training worksheet on this topic very soon. That worksheet will be available in English and in Spanish. In the meantime, we included the USDA Grains Policy Memo as a handout for this webinar. It was attached to your confirmation email you should have received when you registered, as well as to the reminder email if you uh, registered before 2 p.m. yesterday. You do not have to read the entire handout, of course, but you may refer to the list of grains on page five and six to help you answer the knowledge check questions throughout the webinar. You'll hear me talk about whole grains, brands and germs, enriched grains, disregarded ingredients, and other and non-creditable grains and flours throughout this presentation. And those lists of those ingredients will be what's on pages five and six of that handout. So, as many of you know, in the CACFP, grains served at least one snack or meal must be whole grain rich. This applies only to children and adults in the CACFP. Infants are not required to be offered whole grain rich foods, but of course you're welcome to serve them to infants if you'd like. Many of you may be wondering what I mean when I say whole grain rich. 
Whole grain means rich means at least half of the grain ingredients are whole grain ingredients, and the remaining grain ingredients are enriched in grains, bran, or germ. Whole grain ingredients have all parts of the grain kernel intact, so meaning the bran, the endosperm, and the germ that you see on the screen, those are all intact in a whole grain ingredient. This also means that the nutrients that are naturally in the bran and germ are also still in the food. Enriched ingredients mean that the bran and the germ of the kernel are removed during processing, and then some vitamins and minerals are added back in later. So there are different ways to tell if a food is whole grain rich. You can use any of the methods that we talk about today. The food does not have to meet all of these methods to be considered whole grain rich. It just has to meet one of the methods. These methods are explained in great detail on page three of the handout, but we will summarize them very, very quickly now. So if the grain is found on any state agency's WIC approved whole grains list, or marked as a whole grain food on the WIC list, then it's whole grain rich. Or if a certain food, including bread, rolls, buns, macaroni, spaghetti, or vermicelli, say whole wheat, entire wheat, or gram, such as whole wheat rolls, entire wheat bread, or gram buns, then it is whole grain rich. If the food has something called an FDA-approved whole grain health claim, then it is whole grain rich. Or if the food meets the whole grain rich criteria for the NASCO school lunch program or breakfast program, then it is whole grain rich. Or if you have proper documentation from a manufacturer or a standardized recipe that shows that whole grains are the main grain ingredient by weight, then it is whole grain rich. And finally, if the ingredients in the food meet the rule of three, then it is whole grain rich in the CACFP. If you've never heard of the rule of three, don't worry. The rule of three will be the focus of today's webinar. So to use the rule of three, you will need to look at a food's ingredient list. As many of you know, many foods have ingredient lists on the box, bag, or other packaging that tell you what ingredients are in the food. Ingredients are listed in the order of most to least in a food. So for example, the ingredient on the screen lists whole grain wheat as the first ingredient. So that tells you that this food has more whole grain wheat than it does wheat bran, enriched corn flour, sugar, salt, etc. In the rule of three, you're looking at the first three grain ingredients in your grain food to see if your food is whole grain rich. Looking at the first three grain ingredients lets you know if the food is made up of mostly whole grains. You can still use the rule of three even if your food only has one or two grain ingredients or if you have more than three grain ingredients. In the rule of three, the first grain ingredient must be whole grain rich, or whole grain, I'm sorry. The first grain ingredient must be whole grain. The second grain ingredient, if the food has a second grain ingredient, must be whole grain, enriched, bran, or germ. The third grain ingredient, if the food has a grain ingredient, must also be whole grain, enriched, bran, or germ. If your food does not meet this criteria, you can still use the other methods that we talked about to see if your food is whole grain rich. Again, these methods are explained in great detail starting on page three of the handout. But for our webinar today, our focus will be on seeing if a food is whole grain rich using the rule of three. There are some ingredients in grain products that may not be whole grain rich, bran, or germ. We call these ingredients non-creditable grains or flours. If any of these non-creditable grains or flours are the first, second, or third grain ingredients in your grain food, then you cannot use the rule of three to determine if this food is whole grain rich. These non-creditable grains or flours are written on the screen, and you can also turn to page six of today's handout. The web link to the handout is also being broadcast to your chat box. 
So to use the rule of three, the first thing you're going to do is find your ingredient list on the back bag or box or other packaging of the green food. Sometimes it can be found close to the nutrition facts panel. For grain foods that are single items, meaning the only meal component in the food is grains, you will want to look at the entire, grain, entire ingredient list. Grain foods that are single items include bread, pasta, bagels, pancakes, and breakfast cereals, just to name a few. Combination foods are foods that have more than one food component. For example, a burrito may have a tortilla that credits towards the grain component, cheese that credits towards the meat alternate component, and beans that credit towards the vegetable component. Other examples of combination foods include a chicken and wild rice soup where you have the wild rice as your grain, chicken as your meat, and diced vegetables crediting towards the vegetable component, and a cheese pizza that has a wheat crust that credits towards the grain component, and shredded cheese that credits towards the meat, meat alternate component. When looking at a combination food to see it's whole grain rich, you only need to look at the part of the ingredient list that applies for the grain food. So let's go through a quick example. On the screen, you see an ingredient list for the entire cheese pizza. To see if this pizza is whole grain rich, you only have to look at the parts of the ingredient list for the crust since that is the part of the pizza that will credit towards a gray ingredient. Here, the ingredients that make up the crust are outlined in brown. Now, let's take an even closer look. Sometimes, grain items have what we call disregarded ingredients. You can find these disregarded ingredients on page six of today's handout. Many of these disregarded ingredients are made from grains, but there is usually such a small amount in foods that they can be ignored when using the rule of three. So once you have found your ingredient list, you may want to cross out the disregarded ingredients. Of course, if you're in a store looking at the ingredients list of a food before you buy it, you would want to put your finger over the disregarded ingredients rather than marking them out. The ingredient list shows only the ingredients of this ingredient list on your screen shows only the ingredients of the crust in the pizza. The ingredients for the pizza's cheese and the pizza's tomato sauce are not shown. You can see that the ingredients in the crust include water, wheat gluten, and the statement contains less than 2% each of the following. All of these disregarding ingredients can be crossed out. Now, we're ready to look for our first grain ingredients, words such as flour, wheat, grain, bran, germ, and oats can often be a sign of a grain ingredient. Now, let's do a quick knowledge check. I will show you an interactive poll in a minute where you can actually click on the screen to answer yes or no to this question. But first, let's go over this question together. Take a look at this ingredient list for the pizza crust. What is the first ingredient? Is it whole wheat flour? Is it enriched flour? Or is it yeast? So take a look. And once you have your answer, hold on to it in your head for just a second, and I will show you the polling slide where you can click on the circle next to the answer. So again, take a look at your ingredient list and find the first grain ingredient. Is the first grain ingredient whole wheat flour, enriched flour, or yeast? Okay, go ahead and submit your responses. Let's see, oh my goodness, wow, great job. Great job, everyone. The first grain ingredient is whole wheat flour. It is listed first on the ingredient list, and because it says flour, we know it is likely to be a grain ingredient. Okay, so now that we found our first grain ingredient, let's start applying the rule of three. When using the rule of three in CACFP, the first grain ingredient must be whole grain. Some common whole grain ingredients are listed on page five of the handout, as well as listed on the screen. They include brown rice, bulgur, oats, quinoa, whole corn, and others. This is not a comprehensive list of whole grain ingredients, so if you have any questions about whether or not an ingredient is whole grain, please check with your sponsor or state agency. Make sure the grain ingredient is not on the list of, of non-credible grains or flours that we mentioned earlier. 
Okay, let's do another quick knowledge check. Just like the last knowledge check, I will show you a poll on the next slide for you to, en to enter your answer. But let's look at this question together. Take a look at the common whole grain ingredients on the left of the screen and the ingredient list on the right of the screen. If the first grain ingredient in the ingredient list, the whole wheat flour, a whole grain. Again, I will show you the poll in a minute where you can select your answer, but I want to leave the slide up for a minute to give you a time to read everything. So take a look at the whole grain ingredients on the left or on page five of the handout and the ingredients list for the pizza crust on the right. Decide if the first ingredient, the whole wheat flour, is a whole grain ingredient. Okay, now you can click on the circle next to yes if you think the first grain ingredient is whole grain, or you can click on the circle next to no if you think the first grain ingredient is not whole grain. Nice work, everyone. The answer is yes. The first grain in ingredient in this ingredient list is whole grain. As we talked about, the first ingredient is whole wheat flour. Whole wheat flour is on our list of whole grain ingredients, so we know that the first grain ingredient in this list is whole grain. And if your first whole grain ingredient was not whole grain, then you would need to use a different method to see if your food is whole grain rich. For instance, you could see if it's on any state's WIC list or if it's considered whole grain rich when serving school meals. Please contact your state agency or sponsor for more information. Taking a look at this ingredient list for the pizza, we see other words on there that tell me there may be other grain ingredients in the crust, such as wheat flour, malted barley flour, and wheat bran, and those are outlined in orange on your screen. So we know that we should move on to the next step in the rule of three, where we will look at the second grain ingredient. Some grain foods may have only one grain ingredient, like the pasta and the crackers shown on the screen. If the item only has one grain ingredient and it is a whole grain ingredient, then you can stop here. Your food is whole grain rich. So let's go back to our pizza. Let's look at the second grain ingredient. When using the rule of three in CACFP, the first grain ingredient must be whole grain and the second grain ingredient can be whole grain enriched bran or germ. We already looked at the whole grain ingredients on previous slides. Some common enriched bran and germ ingredients can be found on page six of the handout and also are written on this slide. So we are talking about ingredients such as enriched wheat flour, enriched corn flour, enriched rice flour. Common bran and germ ingredients include corn or oat bran as well as wheat germ. Again, these are not comprehensive lists of enriched bran or germ ingredients. So if you have questions about specific ingredients, please check with your sponsor or state agency. And again, you want to make sure the second grain ingredient is not on the non-credible grains or flours list. Now let's do a quick, another quick knowledge check. And again, you'll get a polling slide in just a second. But first, let's go over this question together. We know that the first grain ingredient is whole wheat flour, which is whole grain. Now, look for the next grain ingredient after that whole wheat flour. Once you've found it, see if this grain ingredient, which would be the second grain ingredient in our pizza crust, is whole grain, enriched bran or germ, or none of the above. So I'll give you a second to do that. Again, look at your list of ingredients in your handout or on the slide, and then look at the ingredient list. Um, decide if the second grain ingredient is whole grain, enriched, bran, or germ, or, am I tricking you guys, is it really none of the above? Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and put up a polling slide. Go ahead and enter your answers. Nice work. You guys are too fast for me. Okay, as many of you answered, the second grain ingredient is an enriched ingredient. We know this because the second grain ingredient is enriched wheat flour, which is listed under common enriched ingredients on the left of your screen. Let's take a closer look at the enriched wheat flour. Some of you might have noticed that the enriched wheat flour has a parentheses next to it, and the parentheses include the long list of ingredients that make up the enriched flour. Think of the ingredients in the parentheses as part of the ingredient in front of it. In other words, the bleached wheat flour, the malted barley flour, the niacin, niacin is a type of vitamin, and all the way down to folic acid are all part of the enriched wheat flour. So when we use the rule of three, 
the rich wheat flour and everything in the parentheses counts as one grain ingredient. So everything inside the red boxes can be counted as one grain ingredient. So now, let's go back at looking at the entire ingredients list for the pizza crust. We talked about how the first grain ingredient, the whole wheat flour, was a whole grain, and we talked about how the second grain ingredient, the enriched wheat flour, is enriched. If you had a product that had only two grain ingredients, and the first ingredient was whole grain, and the second grain ingredient was whole grain enriched bran or germ, then you could stop here. You know your food is whole grain rich. For this pizza crust, we see other words on the list that tell us there may be another grain in the crust, the wheat bran. So we know that we should move on to the last step in the roll of three, where we'll look at the third grain ingredient. Let's look at the third grain ingredient. So for a food to be whole grain rich in CACFP using a roll of three, again, our first ingredient has to be a whole grain. The second in grain ingredient must be whole grain and rich bran or germ. The third grain ingredient follows the same rules as the second grain ingredient, meaning the third grain ingredient must also be whole grain enriched bran or germ. Okay, you guys know what's coming, another knowledge check. Again, you'll get a polling slide in just a second where you can click on the circle next to the answer on your screen. We know that in this pizza crust, our first ingredient is whole wheat flour, which is a whole grain. This is highlighted in purple. And we know that the second grain ingredient is enriched wheat flour, which includes all the items in the parentheses. So that includes your bleached wheat flour, malted barley flour. Now, look for the next grain ingredient after the enriched wheat flour. Once you've found it, see if this grain ingredient, which would be your third grain ingredient in this crust, is whole wheat, enriched bran or germ, or none of the above. So I'll give you a second to do that. Go ahead and find your third grain ingredient and decide if it's whole grain, enriched bran or germ, or none of the above. Okay, and here is your polling slide. Go ahead and submit your answers. All right, nice work, everybody. As many of you answered, the third grain ingredient is wheat bran, which is a type of bran. Okay, keeping this in mind, let's do one last knowledge check. Is this pizza crust whole grain rich? Remember that for a grain item to be considered whole grain rich using the rule of three, the first grain ingredient must be whole grain, the second grain ingredient must be whole grain enriched bran or germ, and the third grain ingredient must be whole grain enriched bran or germ. Thinking back over the three grain ingredients we talked about today, the whole wheat flour, the enriched wheat flour, and the wheat bran, is this pizza crust considered whole grain rich in the CACFP? Okay, and here is your polling slide. Go ahead and submit your answers. Nice work, everybody. Everyone got this one right. The answer is yes. This pizza crust is considered whole grain rich because the first grain ingredient, the whole wheat flour, is whole grain. The second grain ingredient, the enriched wheat flour, is enriched. And the third grain ingredient is wheat bran, which is a type of bran. Finally, let's talk very quickly about ready breakfast cereals. For ready to eat breakfast cereals, you may not always have to look at the first three, three grain ingredients to tell if it's whole grain rich in CACFP. Before looking at the cereal to see if it's whole grain rich, of course you want to make sure that it first meets the sugar limit for cereal in the CACFP of no more than six grams of sugar per one ounce of cereal. Team Nutrition has a worksheet and a CACFP halftime webinar that talks about how to make sure your cereal meets the sugar limit, and we can send out the links to both in the post-webinar email. Once you know that your cereal meets the sugar limit, Take a look at the first grain ingredient. If the first grain ingredient is whole grain and the cereal is fortified, then your cereal is whole grain rich. You do not need to look at the second or third grain ingredients. To find out if your cereal is fortified, look for the word fortified on the food package. You can also look at the ingredient list to see if it lists any vitamins or minerals that have been added to the product. The ingredient list you see on the slide shows the first grain ingredient as whole grain oats, which is a whole grain ingredient, and also shows vitamins and minerals in the label. This indicates that this cereal has been fortified. 
If your cereal is not fortified or if you don't know if it's fortified, then you can use the regular rule of three we just talked about, where you look at the first three grain ingredients to tell if the cereal is whole grain rich. Or you can use any of the other methods that we talked about in the beginning um, to see if your cereal is whole grain rich. So that includes the informational part of our webinar today. We'll take questions in a minute, so please go ahead and start typing them now. And I'm just going to go over some post-webinar housekeeping information very quickly. Those of you who attended for the entire 30 minutes today will get a certificate via email by the end of the day on October 23rd. Please check your spam or junk email mailboxes um, and wait until the 23rd before asking us about your certificates. If you're viewing them with multiple people, you can print out a certificate for each person. We also have more practice questions available at the National CACFP Sponsors Association website listed on the screen. And for those of you who want to submit or track continuing ed credits with NCA, you can do so at that link as well. This webinar is being recorded and will be made available on the Team Nutrition website. If you're watching this as a recorded webinar and want a certificate, you can go to the National CACFE Sponsors Association website to complete the post-webinar practice questions and then get a certificate. These certificates may be sent a few days after completing the questions. Finally, please join us for our halftime webinar next month where we will be talking about grain-based desserts in the CACFP. We will not be hosting a CACFP halftime webinar in December, but on January 17th, CACFP halftime will return and we will continue with this topic of identifying whole grain rich foods for the CACFP. Finally, feel free to visit our website, subscribe to our newsletters, connect with us via email, and follow us on Twitter. And now it's finally question time. So in the room I have Katie Hallis and Melissa Dago Katz, a few colleagues in child nutrition who will be helping me with asking and answering your questions. Great. Thank you so much, Mimi, for packing all that information in on the rule of three, just one of our methods that can be used for identifying whole grain rich foods. Um, so we do have about three minutes left, Great. so we're going to pack in as many questions as we can. Okay. Um, so let's see. We have one here. It says, so, oh, so what if the front of the package says made with whole grains? Does that mean the food is whole grain rich? That's a great question. So some food manufacturers do use different terms to label their products, but unfortunately that doesn't mean they're whole grain rich. Some common terms you might see are whole grain, made with whole grains, made with, made with whole wheat, or contains whole grains. You would still need, need to use a rule of three like we talked about today, or another method listed on the handout to see if this food is truly whole grain rich. Okay, thank you. Um, next question here, I only serve one meal per day in my program. Does the grain I serve have to be whole grain rich every day? Yes, if you only serve one meal per day, so breakfast, lunch, or supper, then the grain served at those meals must be whole grain rich to meet the whole grain rich requirement. For snacks, remember that grains are optional at snacks, so if you only serve snacks and you choose not to serve a grain, then of course you don't need to serve a whole, um, a whole grain rich grain. But if you serve a grain at snack and that is the only CACFP meal or snack you are serving, then it does need to be whole grain rich. Okay, great. Thank you. Next question. Um, oh, so I serve a different group of children at lunch than I do at breakfast, so two groups of children. Does that mean I have to serve a whole grain rich food at both meals to reach both groups of children? No. The whole grain rich requirement applies to the center or daycare home, not to each adult or child participant. If you serve breakfast and lunch and there are two different groups of children at each meal, only one meal that day must contain a whole grain rich food. Great. Thank you. Okay. It looks like we have time for one more question mm -hmm. here. Um, and I know a lot of people are curious about this one. So okay. um, I really like the training wor worksheets you all have developed on different topics related to the CACFP. Um, thank you all for that. Uh, will, there, okay. will there be one created for this topic on identifying whole grain rich foods that you covered today? So I'm again, just like Katie, I'm so happy to hear you like our materials and I'm glad you asked. Yes, Team Nutrition will be releasing a training worksheet on this topic very soon. And as, as with many of our materials, it will be available in both English and in Spanish. So I believe that's all the time we have for today. Thank you all for your great questions. If you have additional questions or need more clarification on topics, 
please contact your state agency or sponsor. Um, again, that's all the time we have today, but please know that we do read all your questions and comments as well as the comments in the post-webinar survey in orderly to keep improving these webinars and really meet your needs. Thank you all so much again, and we look forward to seeing you next month on our webinar on November 15th. Have a great day, everyone.